probably one thing you should live by is never fear failure, but be terrified of regret. Hey guys, welcome to the Up Next podcast where we are interviewing teen entrepreneurs that are making it big time in the startup world. We are asking the questions we know you want to hear. Up Next is an app made for teens where anyone can join or build a real life startup. So our guest today is Jank Oz, age 15 from the UK. He has founded iCoolKid, which was named in the past. It's currently Thread Media, which it does a bunch of media publishing, consulting, and production company aimed at teens and young adults. He, you're seriously, Jank, I'm like a super fangirl. I read a bunch about you. It's like, yep. I, I wanted to do the introduction. I'm not even kidding. Yeah. Entrepreneur, yeah. performer, speaker, DJ, philanthropist. It, like the list doesn't end. Business Insider, CNN, Forbes, whatever you want, all of this, and you founded the company at age eight. I am in awe and super jealous at age 25 interviewing you. So let's um, get started. If there's anything that you want to add before we start asking you questions, go for it. That is absolutely it. Thank you so much. Uh, firstly, thank you very much. Very, very kind of introduction. I didn't even think it was me you were talking about for a second, but thank you so much. <laughs> Uh, no, I just want to add that Thread, yeah, we really do help uh, hope to be a positive and unifying force that will kind of bring together the social spirit of Generation Z and lead these global movements. So, yeah. It really does seem to be a force to be reckoned with. I love it. Let's start the clock with the first question. Um, how did you actually find yourself creating your first business? Uh, what sparked the idea? Uh, well, it's quite a weird kind of Weird story. I was around eight years old, as you said, and uh, and you know, a classic kind of Monday morning day school question: uh, What did everyone do on the weekend? And all the other kids would: uh, I went to football match, rugby match. I did this kind of pretty generic, basic thing. But I'd always say: I went to this musical. I went to this dance lesson. This this graffiti thing, or what other like this museum. So many would be bits out of the whack, out of the normal, basically. Uh -huh. And then week by week. Kids would start saying, so Jank, what are you doing this weekend? Because you seem to be having quite a lot of fun on the weekends and I kind of want to join you. That kind of progressed into mums saying, hey, Jank's mom, what is Jank doing this weekend? Because my kid wants to join in. And then completely like, not even structurally, but it just kind of came about that my mum was almost writing a, a weekly kind of, here's what Jank's doing on the weekend, <laughs> email to these parents, to these parents who like generally wanted to join me on what I was doing. That email started to go spread around to like a weirdly a large amount of family saying, try this out on the weekend. And then we kind of clocked that this was a good idea. You're giving information to Generation Z. This clearly hasn't been done yet because it's going viral as an email between school moms. So, and then that kind of, there was a lot of guessing and knowing as it has to be for anyone starting a company, let alone a kind of an eight year old with an idea for a website. Uh, three years of guessing and knowing later, uh, we kind of uh, found a great website builder and then iCoolKid was born. And that's kind of how the, and at the time the idea was basically just giving Generation Z, it's quite vague now I'd say it, just giving Generation Z information that isn't major sports, gossip or like politics. Just cool information that's safe to, that's safe to Nice. Very cool. I love yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so who would you consider your first mentor out of probably the numerous ones that you've met? And what did they help you go through? Was it also someone new in your life? Or would you say it's like a sibling or someone? No, I think definitely it's been a, a parents of mine. Because I was fortunate enough that both my parents in their own rights have been kind of entrepreneurs of some form. And especially my mom, she's been massively involved. She's helped, obviously, given that she's the CFO, kind of has that money brain, which becomes very useful. Very and nice. so I think that's probably my first uh, kind of mentors and inspirations as such. Uh, but I have been introduced to lots of new mentors along the way, family friends, school friends, school teachers, kind of different people you meet. Even now, I still meet new mentors every night, kind of on like clubhouse, talking to different people. So That's pretty cool. you know, I think new mentors come every day, but I think the first one's probably my parents. But you always learn from someone. I love that. Of course. Yeah, I mean, have to in 15. <laughs> right. You can teach us a few things, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, that's pretty cool. And actually, uh, a, a, a question that I personally wanted to ask you is, how much time did it take to build your first product when you launched? I mean, 
uh, you created I Cool Kids. So how much time did it, how did, how much time did you spend to create it? Well, uh, as I said before, it was like three years of yesing and knowing. And actually a lot of that was uh, trying to find the right website company and website designer to help us because we had all the ideas, but we just, it's, it's a very hard thing to be able to uh, kind of form those ideas and put it into technology and have it work well. So we, it took a while for us to find a website builder who we really kind of like enjoyed and wanted to have a relationship with. Because uh, I find that the relationship with your website developer, especially as a startup, is obviously massively crucial. Right. Uh, and that was for iCoolKid. And then uh, actually, eventually, we changed again for Thread because we kind of wanted a different, a different kind of genre as such. And it wasn't because we didn't like the old one. It's just different kind of different website designs that you needed. Different vibe. Yeah, different vibe. Yeah, precisely. So then we actually found this one a lot quicker. And this one's called Media Blaze, and we're still with them now. And we hope to have a very long, ongoing, healthy relationship with them. And Perfect. they're still going strong with us. I like the name. Nice. Yeah, no, it's very good. Yeah, very cool. And we love the founders when we interviewed them. So it kind of stuck quite quickly. Nice. Great. Okay. Um, and how would you say that you paid for the production of your first version that you launched? So I cool kids speaking. Yeah, of course. Well, I think I was, I was in a very fortunate situation, which obviously I appreciate most people don't have, but I had already earned money from acting. So I used to do quite a lot of young acting and public speaking actually based around the fact that I was starting a website. No, so you're a one man show. No, but so I had that kind of money and I was able to contribute, but it also meant that. I was also fortunate enough to have family friends who had kind of done similar things and had startups. And it meant that instead of having to pay for mentorship and ideas, I was able to basically get those ideas and that mentorship and that training for free, which meant that I was able to use the same amount of money to drive the idea forward directly, which I again was very fortunate about. I mean, that's pretty good. That, that is actually, um, sorry to interrupt, but that is actually pretty cool. I mean, uh, how did you get the, the first customers or first users to go into your website? I mean, like you said, uh, you um, drive it forward through the email that went at first, but like, how did you actually create, create the fan base like when you scaled it up? Yeah, I think something that massively helped was quite quickly through acting and public speaking, I was able to get to 10K on Instagram. And the second oh, you right. get to 10K, I don't know if you know this, but you can start doing swipe up stories yeah. and it allows you to monitor your audience much, much easier. So then the second I got that, I was able to, and this, and I kind of got 10K as the website was kind of starting to launch and kick off. So it meant that everyone I had on Instagram, and I had at the time I had quite like a high engagement rate as well, because it was low enough that you still have high engagement. So I put out a story, everyone swipe up, new website out, kind of big flashing gifts. Announcement, and, yeah. and then that was kind of the main way that everything started to like, it kind of, it's a bit of a snowball effect where you do one thing and then it kind of kicks off. What would you say is your next goal that you're aiming with for your company and, you know, maybe personal goals as yeah. a fan speaking? Well, I think company wise is kind of, I think company was much easier to answer. You got like you got distinct goals. I think the one of the things we're aiming for and have actually started now is kind of make building out a a kind of spider's web almost globally of remote writers. Nice. So that and the idea eventually is kind of we think of it as phase two of thread, is that you'll have a different thread based on where you're coming onto the website from. And say I'm coming from rural Malaysia, I'll have a very different looking thread to whether I was in central New York. Right. And the idea of remote writers and kind of forming this global ecosystem of writers kind of means that we'll have writers everywhere and it will make your experience much more personalized because you'll be able to get stories. Yes, you'll be able to see stories from across the whole world, but it also means that you'll see stories much closer to home. And hopefully the idea is that you'll enjoy that more and then you'll keep on coming back because you'll have better content. You'll enjoy it more. So that's kind of that you one of our... things that you can do in your yeah. area. That's like optimized, optimized for the location of the person. Precisely, yeah. Uh, and effectively, if you think of it in kind of concentric circles, you'll have your kind of city, village, town, or kind of whichever is the point there. And then you'll have your country, continent, and then world. And the kind of the world ones will be the same for everyone. But as you can imagine, they're kind of, it will vary. Uh, we're kind of on that similar point. We're trying to translate to new languages. Actually, just a few days ago, it was very exciting. We looked at a uh, thread in kind of 
in kind of Chinese, in Arabic, in French, Spanish, Turkish. It was all quite quite funky. Nice. Us, little symbols in our headlines, which was quite that cool. That is a huge step. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, and and then we're launching our programs, actually mainly through our Discord. Uh, but we're launching kind of ambassador and internship programs, as you can, as kind of most companies do. We're starting to I mean, we up. and the internships, as I said, and uh, yeah, that's and oh, and the launch of the consulting website because we've kind of been doing all the consulting yeah. behind the scenes, but we're going to officially kind of we've made our rate cards, we've done all the kind of behind the scenes. We need to launch our website now. So you work with a bunch of people, I'm sure, like a bunch of different contexts. Um, what would you say are three traits that you look for in a business partner, co-founder type? I think the, I think drive, you, you really have to believe what you're doing. And I feel like if you don't believe it's very hard to fake what you believe. So it's, and I, and obviously like, I don't want anyone to be unhappy. So you kind of, I, if you tell me you're hundred percent in, then you're hundred percent in. And I believe you'd be like, you really have to give it your all mean what you're saying. Uh, I think that kind of relates kind of, but you have to have a lot of ideas because, and I feel like if you're truly committed, you will have ideas. So they kind of come hand in hand, but I feel like if you don't have ideas and as rough as it is to say, it's like, you're not bringing much if you see what I mean. Right. Uh, and I think it goes without saying, but honesty is you have to be able to like, there's only so much fun you can have with people who just say yes the whole time. Yes. People effectively. Yeah. 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 Don't be too typical. Yeah, precisely. Um, like you said, uh, you're working with a lot of people, but the one thing that is like, it's the most uh, uh, obvious thing about you is that you're very young. I mean, you're just 15 years old. And I thought I was young when I started, I'm 21, but name one advantage or, and one dis and disadvantage of being a, a young entrepreneur in such a young age. Yeah. Well, I feel like, from an advantage side, everyone, when I, like this question it happens like quite often as you can imagine, but everyone says, uh, so you must kind of like not get taken seriously. You must have really struggled. But right. actually I found that the fact that I was so young actually allowed me to, it, it really shot me out of the crowd because it allowed me to kind of take this trajectory where I was getting public speaking and press at like a rate quicker than like I could ever imagine because it's all all 15 year old CEO and it kind of so shocking and impressive right, right, that right. takes a lot more out. kind of that takes a lot that really catches your eyes more right. than kind of classic business model CEO yeah. which I mean like as much press as they get it becomes a lot easier when you have that kind of aspect that really shines you out and right. also it meant that I was able to get a lot of and kind of I did acting as I said beforehand so I had the kind of public speaking confidence and when you combine 15 year old CEO and public speaking you kind of you again like I said you're on this trajectory which massively helps you to get kind of views impressions and press mm -hmm. which I found was a massive advantage but having said that the disadvantage of being 15 is that right. there's only so much time you can spend without basically needing to be in school effectively right. so as much as me and my mom kind of collaborate to make sure I'm kind of doing stuff, have enough free time, get my schoolwork done, I'm able to kind of build a company. It is, you kind of, it is much easier to do not at school. Which tech tool would you say that you just can go without, you find yourself always using it, it's your biggest lifesaver these days? Uh, Slack, I think Slack is definitely the answer to that. We have all about like six different channels for different clients, different boards, different sections within Thread even have their own different channels. And we're on it 24 seven. It's open on about 12 tabs on each computer. And we, I think that's probably the, the essential tech thing that we have just where email doesn't quite cut it. This kind of, this goes up and this goes, over, this goes above and beyond, frankly, when it comes to it. Which entrepreneurs or leaders inspire you, inspire you uh, the most these days and, and why? I think kind of classic answer, Elon Musk. I think without being crude, he's just a bit of a baller, frankly. Um, he's got a really good, I think, I think aside from the fact that he's quite funny and as I said, a bit of a baller, his, right. his ability to kind of be like laughed at, well not laughed at, but kind of said, no, you're crazy, but then still be able to right. say, no. So I'm thinking actually, things like not a flamethrower. Yeah, exactly. So. He, has, he has the ability to say, I'm actually living in 2030 right now. And, 
and he kind of does and he executes on things that people didn't even think would be possible and then he would like laugh at the idea oh the doorbell's going off <laughs> fancy doorbell yeah i know we've just got the ring installed it's quite cool because you can kind of see who's at the door <laughs> uh, uh, Elon Musk has kind of got that ability to say no I'm going to stick to my own path and then give me a year and you'll realise that I was right yeah, and I think totally. that's admirable in every sense to be honest Malcolm Gladwell I don't know if you've read the book Outliers but that was effectively biblical to me and uh, his kind of concept of 10,000 hours I still live by it every day for everything I do acting, music, drama I, I kind of live by that so yeah so we really do feel like you can do pretty much anything so give me you know give me more of a human side which trade do you feel is your weakest and you feel that you need to outsource it maybe with you know another person that compensates for that well i feel like everything that we kind of have the team do we end up doing because i just can't and i can't wrap my head like graphic design um, I, I just not i you you watch me on power on like photoshop i look like a uh, it's a bull in a china shop frankly like there's i just have no clue what i'm doing uh, writing skills. I mean, there's only so many English essays you can write in school, but that does right. not prepare you for kind of writing articles. That, I, that again, and one of the most other things, I just can't wrap my head around. I've tried it before. Unbelievably hard thing to do. Which is really uh, surprising because you're so good with words and, you know, talking. Yeah, that's them. actually pretty... Yeah. Thank you. No, thank you. But, you know, it's actually a really, like, hard skill. Uh, Elliot, are uh, unbelievably talented kind of production what the creativity you can produce with editing and splicing and kind of animations coming in left, right and center, that baffles me. He's also an incredible artist. Uh, and kind of the community building aspect, I'm just not very good at. And we have an awesome kind of community building analyst and community builder as such who can help. But those are the kind of things that we kind of outsource because we find so difficult. But what kind of things I do, which I find that I kind of, ace is the kind of the public speaking speaking to generation z hopefully inspiring that's the idea at least yeah. so. right. actually i mean you have like these amazing answers for everything it's pretty mm -hmm. cool that and actually to think again that you're only 15. i'm gonna start cool. thinking you're like a drone or something at right this like elon elon yeah yeah like elon Watch musk, elon musk. <laughs> yeah exactly exactly <laughs> um so what single piece of advice would you give to uh, all the teens listening? And I don't want to give, and I want, I don't want you to give some, you know, like generic answers. I want you to be real. And, yeah. Don't be like, you know, like I said before, like I said, in different podcasts, you know, uh, 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 beauty pageant answers. I don't want that. I want like a real genuine answer from you. I think okay, I've got like two kind of main things I'd say. They're both, they are a bit kind of Confucius say, kind of Buddha quotes, but they do work. I think one's a bit more psychological. And it's that if you treat your idea, you have an idea. If you treat your idea like an idea today, it will be an idea tomorrow. But if you treat your idea like a company today, it will be a company tomorrow. So that's kind of the, the thought of it's, if you can swap it, oh, there, go there goes the doorbell again. There it is. If you can change your, if you can kind of change that narrative in your head, from being, oh, this is a distant dream, this is something I will do, to something I am doing, it's gonna, it, it will happen, it will fall into place. Yeah, so thoughts make a reality here. Precisely, yeah, yeah. And I think my other piece thing would be, and I think about this quite a lot, is you should never fear failure, especially nowadays, it's so cheap. You should be terrified of regret. And I can't even imagine how many people thought of Starbucks, Amazon, Facebook. I mean, Starbucks, you put sofa into a coffee shop. How many people thought of that before yeah, Starbucks? Yeah. Did? And they just didn't execute on it. And look where they are and look where the Jeff Bezos is, the Elon Musk of the world are. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I'd be kicking myself if I didn't do that. Right. So I feel like that's probably one thing you should live by is never fear failure, but be terrified of regret. Very nice. nice. I will quote nice. you one day. Please, please do. <laughs> Sure. So you really do like making a an impact, like a social impact or environmental. Where where do you see yourself? Which social change would you like to be a part of the most? I think there are kind of two movements, given my age, which I find really kind of massively important, both very youth based. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the first one is kind of increasing the rate of youth activism, I find is hugely important. I mean, Generation Z alone make up 
32%, 33%, basically a third of the global population. And you guys try to save the world. I mean, we're counting on you. Exactly, yeah. And it's and 40% of all consumers. So, and therefore it means that their wallets have a huge impact on the world economy. And right. when companies are able to align their moral compasses with the Generation Z's moral compasses, that means share of mind and therefore share of wallet, which I think is obviously a massive thing for companies. And this is right. something which I'm telling you for free, but it's something that I tell all, consult all consulting work ever always starts undoubtedly with share of mind, share of wallet. And that's kind of something that companies need to get an idea of very quickly. Uh, I think the second thing, again, massively youth-based, is that uh, it is very, it's, it's something called unearthing lost Einsteins. And it's the concept that it is very easy for parents and teachers to spot an athlete, a musician, someone like unbelievably intelligent. It is very hard for parents and teachers to spot a entrepreneur or an innovator. It's actually virtually impossible. Right. So that you're leaving these entrepreneurs and, and uh, innovators, you're just leaving them to create and drive forward their ideas basically in isolation, whereas you're having tutors and training camps all year round for the athletes and musicians of the world. So I think that schools really need to encourage ideation and need to be there for the journey, the onward development of these ideas, or else they're never just going to blossom and grow like you're allowing these musicians and athletes to. And I think that's the bottom people line. in the background. Pardon? Yeah, exactly. Precisely. Uh, I think the bottom line is that cultures and communities, they just can't evolve without improved kind of literacy rates, urbanization, rapid expansion of everything tech-based, innovation and equality. And I think this is actually leading more to the first point I said, but that all needs to be part of the positive movement that kind of towards that goal. I mean, I have nothing to add. That's a great question. Uh, you're great you're great answer. Right direction. Pretty cool. Well, you're just better than us, Jank. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> if you could have any superpower in the world, what could it be? I've definitely thought about this before. I'm going to go, no. Generic answer, invisibility flight. No. Uh, right. No offense, that's Thank just that's a cut the mustard for me, frankly. Uh, I think I've got two answers. Okay. If I could just constantly eat and not have to worry about any health. Uh, like, that was hey. a superpower. If that was oh, a I mean, pyramid, I'm doing it now. That's it. That's the world. Uh, <laughs> as a former professional athlete, that is the best superpower you can have. It's a whole different that's level. So I just started that's getting that's into that's lockdown that's kind of fitness. And oh my goodness, it's a whole different world. Wow. Uh, and I think not having to sleep would be really useful. So <laughs> Ooh, I can get, actually get my work done. Your superpowers uh, are productive. That's no, yeah, exactly. But this is what I need now, though. I to be able to have all twenty-four hours in a day instead of being a classic boy teenager and sleeping for twelve of them yeah. would be really <laughs> useful. Well, I said teleportation, so I could go anywhere. Oh, that works. That works. Yeah, that's fair enough. It was so fun hearing from you. I really want to see Thanks what so much. you do next. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. Thank well, you. It's our pleasure. Thank you. Bye-bye. Speak bye. soon.